Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, we got Red Raider young bloods to get familiar with. Also, any updates in college basketball free agency? I mean, waiver wire. I mean, transfer portal. And a legend continues to do legendary things. Next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Raider! Good to see you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Thanks for making us once again your first listen on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting FanDuel.com slash Locked On. Chris, as we kick off this week, man, we're doing it in a football frame of mind. Glad to be back with you as that season is growing nearer and dearer. I don't think we've quite gotten to 100 days, but we're hovering in the neighborhood somewhere around 100 days to kick off. And you and I are going to spend so much time this offseason leading up to this year. We've already done it a little bit. Talking about how, how many gray hairs are on the heads of these Red Raiders, maybe even in the beard a little bit. It starts happening <laughs> earlier for some oh, than yeah. others. But man, yeah. <laughs> Chris is actually 26 years old. He just grayed <laughs> early in the beard. Um, this is a veteran team, and there's so much good that comes with all the experience on both sides of the ball, really in all phases of the game uh, for Texas Tech, Chris. But we're going to go away from that, actually, here to begin the week because – there's something on the inexperienced side of things uh, that is really exciting, really interesting as well, because not only are there some young guys we want to discuss here today, but early enrollee guys, guys that are ahead of schedule, <laughs> so to speak, Chris. And these are guys you're going to have to lean on uh, sooner rather than later, because obviously some shoes are going to be left to be filled after this season. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, the, 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 there's a lot of situations with this team where there is really old, and then there's just not, you know, there, there's a there's a gap, and you go to really young and inexperienced. I think what you're, you know, some of the positions on defense specifically, and I think um, you know, linebacker, inside linebacker is kind of like that. Corner is like that, but we'll kind of spend some time talking about some secondary guys here because yeah, you, you know, for all the, the, the Jalen Hutchings and the Tony Bradford's uh, you know, and then you've got, you know, the Malik Dunlap and then the Rayshad Williams, you, you just kind of go, okay, what's behind them. And you, you, you just go really like to redshirt freshman, true freshman type thing. <laughs> so that's the, that's the fun part about this defense this year, but it's a, I mean, it's a bit scary too. And as, as you're right, Cowan, as you kind of look off into the future, like, you know, next year, Boy, you know, you, you're not going to have, unless you go portaling, you're not going to have a ton of age and, and, and experience at some of these spots. Now, granted, it is wonderful to have like the 60 year senior type guys, though, uh, as oh, many yeah. of them as you can get, because you soak up as much from an experience standpoint as you can if you're, if you're these young guys. But uh, bottom line is, yeah, a lot of these young, defensive backs there's three in particular that are gonna get I think pressed into duty fairly quickly I don't know if it's necessarily quicker than anybody wants them to I think there's a talent and need kind of meet meet uh, a, a bit and, and this is what you get but Kevin I also think that like you know a guy like Kobe Miner leaving in the portal kind of has created some dynamics too to to allow for some guys to kind of move up on the depth chart. <clears throat> and so, yeah, but uh, the triplets mm. uh, is kind of what we can spend some time on today. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like, how, how did you really arrive, before we get into these individuals, Chris, how did you arrive at the point of being such an experienced team? Is it just like kind of bonus eligibility from COVID-related mostly or – what kind of classes came to be that now have led to this this year for Coach McGuire? Yeah, so <clears throat> whenever you know, I, I think Matt in, in the last couple of years of Matt's tenure, I think they tried to to really spend a lot of their 
scholarship currency on, on the portal. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's been well documented. They, they hit pretty much across the board uh, when, when it comes to, you know, the, we, 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 we talked about Tyree Wilson and we can go in the Collins schoolers. We're talking about your starting corners here. I mean, just on and on and on and it goes. And, but, but part of their, their reasoning to, to need to, go to the portal, I guess, was that there was some pressure to win and win immediately. You know, you're, you're trying to get this thing turned. You're trying to sustain it. You're trying to win and win now. And, and I think that that's partly why you kind of really use, I don't know, two thirds of your available scholarships in some of those classes and go, go to the portal. They also were pretty clear in most cases of trying to find portal guys that, uh, had more than one year of eligibility left. So it wasn't mm-hmm. just a lot of one and done types. I don't think they were necessarily opposed to that per se, but I think they tried to find guys that had multiple years of eligibility. Well, it, it, you, you fast forward and, and it's that now it's time to pay the piper, which in, in some ways has been great because you weren't guaranteed some of these years at all by some of these guys. I mean, like the Jalen's and the Tony. Uh, Bradford, th- those guys are they, – they just like it here. I think they love Joey McGuire. I think they love Tim DeRuiter. Uh, they're, they're tweener NFL types, no guarantees at all. So I think they just like the vibe here. So you stay old there. And then your two corners, I think Malik Dunlap had a, had a good, you know, option to go to the NFL draft. And I think he had a decent grade. He, would, he just, again, a bit of a decision to make there. Yeah. With no guarantees. So I think he decided to, to come back and, and make the most of it because, again, some of these guys can make a little money uh, along the way with NIL and, and, and things like that. But those True. four guys is, is kind of why you're you're so old. But think about it. Je- Josiah Pierre, uh, a portal guy from that previous uh, coaching staff. Um, I'm sure I could come up with others, but – uh, you know, I just, I just, they, I think that they're old and they, they wanted to stay here because of what Joey has created. Uh, your quarterback, I guess. I don't quite yep. remember exactly what his path was uh, to Texas Tech, but he was in that kind of window yep. as well. And yeah, I think the, the last thing you said there with your head coach and some of those guys you were just naming specifically, your defensive coordinator, um, you kind of like your opportunity to continue to develop uh, under guys like that and probably just enjoying spending time uh, within the culture they've created. And I missed one thing. I I feel foolish for not mentioning it, but you did that maybe is different for a lot of programs across the country when decision time like this arrives. Uh, NIL compensation. Can you find any way to continue on this level um, to develop yourself as a football player while generating any compensation whatsoever because maybe you do have a kid by that point in time maybe you are married maybe you are really um you know needing to provide in some way and once upon a time chris whenever that time arrived for decision making you may be thinking i'm a tweener i'm a stretch i wouldn't mind another year you know here in this system or developing or whatever to try and prove my stock but uh, I, I literally need to put food on the table for a family. So I'm taking my shot and I'm out. And you leave a college campus to go pursue that professional opportunity. Um, I feel foolish for not mentioning that. that that's got to be something now that is certainly different for a lot of these guys across the country uh, than it was previously. That is the one thing about NIL that I don't know if anybody th- thought about publicly before it was – you know, before this system was in place. Yeah. P- people thought that it would really ruin college athletics. It would hurt it. It would create more of a gap between have and have not and all those things. And in, in, in one of the things that has happened, and, and I can't say that that won't necessarily be true, but we're, we're it's still in its infancy. So it, we're, it's still being all sorted out. But what has happened initially here is that it's really incentivized players to stay in college longer is what we're seeing. And I I like that part. You know, I like that part. As a college football or basketball fan, you know, you get to see better players in the sport for more years as opposed to looking for reasons to go get the bag, uh, as they would say, whether it be overseas or – 
in an NFL or NBA draft or whatever, uh, I think that th- they're deciding, hey, I can come back and get and get paid and take care of my family. And in some cases, you can get paid really well, uh, depending on where you're at. Uh, so I think I think that is uh, that is certainly worth noting as well. Uh, and I and I've I've kind of liked that part. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, anticipated it possibly being a silver lining, and in some ways, we have uh, actually seen that come to fruition. As for the specifics, Chris, want to get into these guys with you. And look, man, you mentioned the word triplets uh, to guys like us. I'm thinking the Ocho. I'm thinking the Ocho Ocho. I'm thinking the Deuce Deuce. All right. So this is a high standard. When you apply a word uh, to a sport or to an athlete, some are just different than others. The triplets in the great state, that word means something. It's still real to me, damn it. And you're talking so, Cowboys, yeah. Of course, the yeah. only ones we could talk about. What are you – that's the only option, Chris. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, I get excited when you think about uh, anybody that could be memorable because that's probably just what we're talking about right now with these not only freshmen but early enrollees, as I said, ahead of schedule. Guys that are like, I'm good on that final spring semester <laughs> of my high school career. I'm on to the next phase. So, you always even look at guys like that a little bit differently because clearly that takes – some organization and some discipline uh, just as an individual to pull that off to begin with. But first, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book and the official sports book of Locked On. Got the NBA playoffs going on, Major League Baseball, Tibetan tiddlywinks or anything in between that's on your radar. FanDuel has got you covered. And right now, if you've never done it before, you're in luck because it's a great time to be a new customer. You can get started with FanDuel right now by downloading the FanDuel app. Safe, secure, easy to use. Woo! First timers, when you get the app, you're going to immediately be eligible for a no sweat first bet. Up to 1000 bucks. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up now. Place your first bet and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. So when you join FanDuel today by downloading the FanDuel app or go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. With FanDuel, an official partner of Major League Baseball, not only freshmen, but early enrollees, as I said, ahead of schedule, guys that are like, I'm good on that final spring semester of my high school career. I'm on to the next phase. So you always even look at guys like that a little bit differently because clearly that takes some organization and some discipline uh, just as an individual to pull that off to begin with. Yeah, you know, the, these these three guys, like, you know, I mean, Aik, Aikman, uh, Emmett, and, uh, and and Michael, man, back in the day, that, that was that was my heyday. You know, I'm like, this Super Bowl stuff is easy, man. Like, they're, they're, they're going to win them all the time, right? <laughs> I, I wish somebody would have, like, shooken me, you know, or shaken me back in the day and be like, no, nah, man, you better enjoy it because you ain't going to see it ever again. <laughs> um, speaking of... Of gray hair and beards and everything, like you, no you look at some of those guys right there nowadays, and uh, guess what's happening? Yeah, it's, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Um, Joey in, in various media settings uh, at the end of spring or in the middle of spring, he he would he would use the term triplets, and yep. he would talk about um, Jordan Sanford, Brendan Jordan, and Chapman Lewis. These are all three. And maybe that's kind of what, what there's three of them, obviously, hence the, the name <laughs> triplets, but they're all Metroplex guys. I mean, this oh, is really? Arlington, yeah. Burleson, Mansfield, I think, uh, uh, general vicinity. And these three guys were all fairly highly ranked recruits. These are all early enrollees and they got a ton of run and reps in the spring. And so Joey kind of was the one that kind of coined that one. And yeah. uh, I think, you know, there, there's a couple of, uh, of, of these guys that I, I don't think people maybe necessarily grasp that they're going to be potentially heavy lifters early on. Uh, and, and it, it's not – that's not necessarily ideal, but, again, talent and need, it just kind of it, – it, it meets. And I think that, you know, like C.J. Baskerville, for example, um, he's going to be your starting star. He's going to replace Muddy Waters. Well, who's backing him up? It's Brendan Jordan, you know. that That's who's backing him up. He is a bona fide and earned that spot backup, and Joey will tell you he did great. 
you know, all spring long. Um, Chapman Lewis and and uh, Jordan Sanford are both look like cover corner types. Uh, it, could there be some some hybrid safety kind of stuff that's talked about with those guys? But right now they're kind of both working for the most part at corner. But Chapman Lewis is like 6'1", 180. Everybody will tell you he's one of the best tacklers on the team already. You know, mm-hmm. everybody you, you, you visit with, tackling machine. He probably recorded the most open field tackles in the spring. On and on it goes. He's a true freshman. What you need from him is, though, is he needs some time to add some weight and some – you know, and some things like that. And then, and then Jordan Sanford is, you, you know, somebody that I think was very highly recruited, uh, track stud. I mean, all, all those things. And the reason that there's a need for those, those types, if we're talking question marks with this team or concerns, I, I, I would, I would list inside linebacker as a, as a top concern or question. But I think depth at corner is, is certainly there as well, or just guys that can straight up cover. Mm. And, and and it's you know it's because of the departure of a guy like Kobe Miner, and then you had an injury to like Mohorn last year, so he he missed most of last year. He's kind of been been elevated. You got a guy like Cam Watts. Uh, there's just not a lot of bodies there when you're employing typically about five DBs on every single play, you know. Right. And I yeah so. So Chapman Lewis and Brendan Jordan, excuse me, Jordan Sanford, and I'm going to do that a gazillion times. I'm going to give the Jordan <laughs> right. Sanford, Brendan Jordan names like, you know, uh, there's a lot of Jordans going on there. Um, Jordan Sanford is the corner. But uh, I, I'm, I, th- I think him and Lewis, Chapman Lewis, really have a chance to, to factor in pretty soon uh, just because they can cover. And they both played a ton of reps in the spring game. Uh, so – but it, it goes back to the conversation that we started. It's really old, and then you skip, you know, a lot of that that sophomore and junior class, and you go straight to freshman in some cases. But these are very talented guys. Uh, they're just green, you know. They and they haven't been in a weight room, a college weight room or nutrition program for a year or two. And but I think Joey. Well, I'll, I'll stop talking, but I, and I've got one more point to make, but uh, I'll, I'll stop talking now. Sorry, of being long-winded. I wasn't giving you a countdown. Was I <laughs> no, blinking or something? It no, you... no, not at all. <laughs> the red I, light's not on. I, I was just going to say that yeah. be, because of that, because you haven't been in a weight room and all those things, there is a lot of thought amongst coaches that DB, especially corner, that's a position where you can play quicker than in other positions. Because you really? don't necessarily have to be the biggest and the strongest, mm. and it's just kind of mono a mono. And if you can turn your hips and you can run and and you've got some physicality to you, and we can teach you technique, you know. Whereas inside linebacker or or offensive line or defensive line, like a trenches or the brain power that comes with a QB, you know, some of those are much more difficult transition from high school to college. Whereas corner may not be as much. Hence the reason that if they've got a few available scholarships, they're not out there. They're not out there trying to use them on a corner. They'd prefer inside linebacker or or offensive gotcha. tackle, uh, is what we've seen. So I think, uh, yeah, the position that they play may allow for more youth to play uh, than, than in others. Uh, I would have been completely wrong on making a guess on that. I always knew, you know, the trench work, O line, D line transition from from high school to this level can really take some time uh maybe it's just because i view cornerback as like one of the hardest positions in all of sports because when uh you move like i do athletically how could you think it, <laughs> it looks easy um i remember once upon a time day one of two a days i believe my senior year i played the same position at that point for six years um uh, five years i didn't fail a grade that i know of they didn't tell me at least if i repeated one um no it's the eighth grade casey it just all looks the <laughs> same and the lessons sound familiar um but i i go in first day of two days my coach who who liked to have fun himself um on the depth chart had me as a, a first team cornerback so i go through the first session of that i mean which is just bewildering to me you know bewildering entirely to me and everyone else so I go through that first session <laughs> with them practicing at that position. We take our half halfway break. This is back when you used to do two in a day for real. It wasn't just called that. Coach comes out and says, Cowan, and pardon the expression here, 
I was taking a dump and thinking about you as a cornerback, and I think maybe you should go back to defensive end. <laughs> All right, Coach. Well, <laughs> the experiment, I guess, didn't last long. But I, I'm a little surprised to hear you say that. But it does make sense that if you can rely on some of your natural ability, uh, maybe at that spot it, it can come through a little quicker. I was just sitting here thinking about, like, who are the last either freshmen, inexperienced, really young guys that came in and made an impact at cornerback? And the name I thought of, and I, I may be missing somebody obvious. I'm truly, really trying to think of someone else. But DJ Johnson is a guy I remember as a freshman that was like, out there and do I have that name right? I think DJ Johnson. Was yeah, there. he was a safety. Like you know, Jamar Wall did it uh, from Plainview back Jamar in the day. Wall, yeah. You know, when he came in here, he played as a young young player. And, and luckily, luckily with these guys, I don't. The, the plan is you're you're not going to ask them to start. You know, th these right. are these are depth. These are top backups. These are special teams guys. Um, you know, it is funny because I was talking to one of the early enrollees that I've had a prior relationship with and have known for a long time. I just saw him in, I don't know, mid to early March or whatever. They had just kind of gotten going. And uh, and it was funny because, I mean, he, he was sitting there saying, he's like, yeah, I'm talking to some of my teammates that are going to play college ball that aren't in early enrolling, you know, or whatever. And they are they're just kind of don't they're not doing anything he goes I, i've been here we we're, we're through some of these practices but i've been here for two or three months and he goes and I, my world has changed around me like i feel like i'm <laughs> so far advanced he goes it's almost like we're in different classes yes from somebody that shows up in june versus if you show up in january and like you think about it you, you have 15 practices under your belt you have, you know where the English building is. You know how, what the culture is. You know exactly what is expected of you. Whereas the guys showing up here, as you and I talk here in a couple of three weeks, th they are starting from scratch. And like, you know, can you remember back to when we were sitting here the first of January? It feels like eons ago. <laughs> so that's how much they, th those early enrollees have under their belt. And it's become the popular thing, you know. Um, it I really think seems like more guys do it now. I was wondering about that. It is such a benefit uh, yeah. to, for all involved, really. It's just I think some guys are not either in a position to do it or not, you know, maybe they play baseball or they run track or they don't want to give up whatever their senior season is. Right. And so, you know, you know, they're just not ready to be done with high school. And I can't blame them for that. It, it's like, I mean, I can't imagine going back to, you know, when I was in high school, if somebody in like December was like, hey, in January, you, you're going to go off to college. I'm like, excuse me? Like, no, nah, I'm not. I'd, I'd have been throwing up the red flags being like, I'm not ready for that. Like, slow down, you know. Um, and so, but but if you're, if you're going to focus on football and you're good at it and you're, you're a scholarship guy, it really behooves you uh, to to get that done early because these three right here, prime example, we would be having a, a much different conversation about them if they weren't early enrollees. We would be talking about, man, maybe you, you hope that they can show up. And this yeah. is the way it used to be when your whole class would show up in June. But now I've got I've got three names of three guys from the Metroplex that have a nickname attached to them <laughs> that are going to be counted on and counted on probably – pretty substantially because the way your roster sets up, but, but they put themselves in a great position because they were here early and because they crushed it in the, in the spring. And so it's just, you're right. It, they, things change a bit. Yeah. And as you mentioned, and and most of us have heard, if you've paid any attention to Joey McGuire's comments, he's been, uh, he's been emphasizing these names and uh, not propping them up, but he's putting them out there. I think also to suggest to them, there are expectations. So, uh, going to need you to to make a hand here shortly whenever it begins for real. I believe uh, 110 days uh, from the time we're having the conversation here nice. today. All right. Before we are out of here for this episode, uh, we're talking about someone that is not green behind the ears. He may be plucking hair from within the ears at this point in time. A true sign of wisdom and manhood. And there's more hardware now in the case for the great Wes Kitley. Uh, we'll get to Coach Kitley next on Locked On Texas Tech. Hold up. 
Richard Megan Locked on Texas Tech, a part of your day on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Appreciate being your first listen every day with Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. And before we're wrapping this episode up, Chris, got to spend just a moment uh, giving a big shout out to Wes Kitley and his Texas Tech track and field program once again, uh, adding Big 12 hardware to the case. I know they're not done. And neither is Wes Kitley, apparently, because I was just saying to you a moment ago off the air that, you know, whenever he's gotten some of these big achievements at Texas Tech, conference hardware or beyond, and I'm thinking, man, I wonder if, you know, that's his that's his curtain call, so to speak. That's his swan song. He's like, all right, I'm good with this now, and I'll ride off into golf or I don't know, whatever you do after that. Uh, but no, he's just continued to collect more uh, awesome stuff there once again from Coach Kitley and his guys. Yeah, and 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 Wes would be the first one to tell you, hey man, I'm I'm not Wes Kitley anymore. I'm just Zach Kitley's dad. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I, we were we were, I was on the field. Uh, and I think it was after the Oklahoma game. Uh, one of the one of those chaotic scenes down there, and uh, and have, there was kids, students rolling up, going, hey, that's Zach Kitley's dad right there. You know, and so he just looked at me <laughs> and he goes, I'm not Wes anymore. I'm just Zach's dad. I thought that was funny, um, but. There's not anybody in Lubbock, Texas, that's any better at what they do than what Wes does with that track and field program, period. I don't care what your profession is. Uh, the guy is just gold, man. And he uh, – I think he's got a very difficult job when you – when you you know, track coaches, they deal with so much that people don't – it's not a high-profile sport, so you don't think about it. You don't see it in many cases. It, this isn't uh, – it's not – uh, televised it's you know all, all those kinds of things in, in, in a lot of cases with their meets but you have so many athletes un, under your you, you know you're, you, you're the leader of so many different athletes boys and girls okay you have two different seasons indoor and outdoor and in Wes's case he's dealing with a ton of international you know folks and uh you you know you, you're constantly recruiting uh anyway it's just it's a lot but they have swept the uh, the men's uh, indoor and now outdoor uh, Big 12 championships this year. And it's just, you know, the guy's running out of fingers for these rings. He's going to look like, uh, <laughs> you know, Bill Russell on the Sports Illustrated cover That's at some right. point. <laughs> yeah, like he, one for the thumb uh, or, or two on the thumb, I think, is that if that cover, uh, if I remember that cover right. Yeah. but Yeah, so on the men's side, they go back to back, indoor, outdoor, in a – I think a Big 12 record with points scored yesterday. 179 points. I texted Wes uh, after it was over. I was like, congratulations. And he he pointed that out. He's like, 179, that is a Big 12 record. And that that's just – and like some of these, if you looked at social media and stuff, some of these relays and some of, they, they just – I mean, because they ran away with the meat, okay, yeah. pun, pun intended. But they, they also, in some of these races, they, there was – they were a far away first. I mean, it's just so depending on what they can do, like in a couple of weeks with like the, the next round and who they qualify for the, for the national championships. I mean, they're going to be in a position to kind of make some noise at the national meet too. Again, depending on how healthy they stay and how many, how many guys they can get qualified you know, the kind of the next uh, phase of, of, of this deal, which is, I think, a couple of weeks away. So, anyway, it's just like a, that, that thing's a machine over there, man. Yep. It, it is fascinating to watch and pay attention to from afar because they just win, period. 179 points, a Big 12 record for Texas Tech, which did not even include competing in the 4 by 400 So, there's just one they didn't even <laughs> – it's still 179 on the day. Texas was in second place with 125, so a bit – of a gap there and uh, just enjoy seeing uh, good things happen to good people. And, and that being an achievement for coach Kitley uh, obviously is enjoyable to see. And, and for the many who take part with his staff uh, and with his athletes as well, but yeah, a national championship. I think this was a ninth or 10th uh, big 12 team championship, not to mention all the individual accolades for his student athletes uh, over the years, but uh, as good as anything going on campus or beyond. You may be right, just in the 806 in general. Is anybody doing their job better <laughs> with whatever job you got to do than Wes Kitley? Um, so shout out to Coach Kitley and the Texas Tech men's track and field program. Um, Chris, before we were out of here, <clears throat> Friday was an exciting uh, conversation we got to have 
Bonus episode of Locked On Texas Tech. If you are not subscribed, you might have missed it. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one. But I want to just uh, ask you really quickly before we're gone. Warren Washington, uh, a commitment for Grant McCaslin. Red Raider men's basketball, seven-footer. You're competing uh, with some in-conference, out-of-conference as well. But Texas Christian, a primary suitor, you keep him away from. That was good news. So that lasted for, I don't know, about 15 minutes. Then somebody says, what's next? I was just curious, maybe visit-wise, uh, anybody not scheduling, anybody scheduling, or anything new floating in the wind <laughs> on the Red Raider hoops front from the last time we talked after uh, a big end to the week last week. Yeah, you know, there, there was a prep school kid uh, reportedly in over the weekend, uh, originally from Finland. I think it was a, a player that they were looking at at University of North Texas. He's a 6'8 kid. Essentially, I say prep school. It, it's essentially a, a kid in high school, uh, a year removed from high school. So his college eligibility hasn't gotcha. hasn't started yet. I think there's still some discussion. I think Kentucky feels really good about Kashad Johnson. Uh, I think there's some, you know, depending on when you're watching this, there may or not be a decision out there yet, but I think there was still some hope that he would visit here early next week, but he's postponed that visit twice. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I, I think, I don't know how true this is, but I think there was a name, uh, Supreme Cook, and that's a real name from Fairfield that was kind of, uh, you know, that entered the portal last week um, that I think that, you know, they could be maybe trying to figure out if there's a, a match there. Uh, you, you're still looking for some size. I think you're you're looking for the six eight, six nine guy that can play power forward, play center, play some, you know, can kind of help Robert Jennings and now Warren Washington out. And and I think you you still want to add one of those. And then you, you're up in the up in the air on on Tyron Lawrence, the you know the Vanderbilt guard. Is that you know that could play out for another three weeks to a month, depending on the NBA draft process, right. or he may have decided to go elsewhere between. Uh, you know, now and, and whenever, because there was a lot of Auburn and Georgia, I think, talk on social media about where he would go. So we'll see. Um, you know, th there there's technically, I guess that is what, three spots left uh, that you've okay. still got to fill. And depending on if you're, you know, they may know, hey, the, the prep school kids filling one, Tyron Lawrence is filling the other. We just need a big. Uh, I mean, who, who the heck knows? And then, and then people are asking about Jason Jackson a lot. The the kid that's committed, uh, that that really hasn't been any contact. He signed uh, a national letter of intent, right? And so, but I don't think there's been any contact between coaching staff and player. I don't know what happens in two or three weeks. I think that's a bit tricky. I don't mm -hmm. think I think if he wanted to show up, he signed that letter, and I think that he can he'd be allowed to show up. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what the latest there is, but I don't expect him to be on the team, but I guess you never know. You can't just like <laughs> totally, uh, you know, plan for that either. So I don't know. Well, that was an Al Pinkins guy. Uh, I think Al Pinkins knew him from his time at university of Florida. That's where Jackson is, is in the state of Florida. He's an athlete, uh, that I think is, is got some skills, but I think his athleticism is why he was sought after. But I don't know where that one stands. Okay. That one's a bit that one's a bit tricky. I'm just trying to do the math there to yeah. kind of give you an idea of kind of what's all in play. Interesting. Okay. Quick look at a few things continuing to go on uh, with Grant McCaslin and the Red Raider men's basketball program. All right, Chris, appreciate the insight and the perspectives as always, man. Enjoyed it. And uh, we'll do it again on the other side. So thanks for the time. I Absolutely. Uh, good to be back with you. Hope every all the moms out there had a happy Mother's Day uh, over the weekend. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Keep hope alive, everybody. You got it. For Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. And we'll see you for the next one on Locked on Texas Tech.